So hello everyone. Uh, I am uh, Mahmoud, uh, professor in ULB uh, in this campus, and uh, we are doing uh, uh, Mobility DB. It's a moving object database system. Uh, so it is meant for uh, trajectory uh, data management. Um, already uh, in the talk of uh, Vizarion, uh, we got an idea what's a trajectory. Uh, in mobility DB, the time uh, dimension is also taken uh, into account. Uh, so uh, if you have a GPS track uh, from your mobile or uh, some GPS tracker, a navigation device or so on, it gives you more or less info data like this. So you get some identifier for, uh, for, for the trip and then a sequence of point and time. Yeah. You can put this in uh, PostGIS, um, in MySQL. Uh, you can use a Boost uh, library in order to start uh, doing uh, data management of this. Uh, what MobilityDB does is it uh, puts the whole trip together. So it encapsulates, it creates this structure for a trip where you have a point, a timestamp, and then and second point, a timestamp. So you you put the whole sequence together in one data type, and that becomes um, a data element in your uh, table. And then you can start uh, writing functions over written SQL to calculate the speed, to calculate the heading, uh, to do uh, selections, to do joins, and so on. Uh, so generally speaking, uh, this is a, a general architecture, you have PostgreSQL providing these uh, uh, relational types, some advanced types like XML and JSON as well. And then on top you have PostGIS, which provides two main abstractions, geometry and geography. Uh, so you can be doing maps. Uh, and then you have MobilityDB on top that provides uh, the temporal information, that adds the temporal information to PostGIS and PostgreSQL types. So you get a temporal geometry point representing a, 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 a car, for example, or a person moving uh, over time. You get temporal geography point according to the coordinates are there geographic or uh, geometric. Uh, but also you get temporal float, temporal integer, temporal text, temporal boolean. And these are important for evaluating uh, functions and predicates over trajectories. For example, the, the speed of a trajectory uh, is changing over time, so that's a temporal float. Uh, you want to check a predicate of a trajectory. Is a car now uh, uh, inside Brussels? Uh, so the result will be a temporal boolean because sometimes it's true, sometimes it's, it's false. So these types have to also be supported. And you can imagine that the, the list of types, of temporal types can, can be extended to support uh, different applications. Right now, these are the main ones supported in MobilityDB. So MobilityDB is a, a vertical extension that extends PostgreSQL um, at, at all data management levels. Uh, so it extends the data model with both time types and temporal types that I just mentioned. Uh, so you can use them in, uh, as attribute types in your table. Uh, it extends the uh, indexes uh, so that one can process fairly large tables uh, quickly. So it extends the, the gist index of PostgreSQL, which is a kind of, uh, which is R3 actually. Uh, the SPGIST, that's a space partitioning, so it's uh, 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 a kind of grid uh, uh, structure. Uh, the B3 index, it also extends a query optimizer uh, so that one can do uh, uh, vacuum analyze to collect statistics about these temporal types uh, and uh, to be able so that the optimizer can can estimate selectivity of predicates and and do its optimization stuff invoke the indexes when relevant uh, try to find uh, the best execution plan and then a big set of operations uh, for example uh, you can you can always project remove the time dimension project to a line string uh, and then do all kinds of uh, processing on a line string. Uh, uh, if you want to include the time, 
then you, you use the lifted operations. We call them lifted because they lift the static operations with time. Uh, so you can do uh, arithmetic on temporal numbers, uh, can do binary operations on temporal booleans, uh, uh, can do distance and uh, uh, topology operations on temporal points, uh, and so on. Uh, this is all uh, built as an extension, not a fork, uh, to PostgreSQL. And because it's an extension, it's by default should be, we hope, compatible with uh, other PostgreSQL, uh, other tools in the, in the ecosystem of PostgreSQL. Uh, we have tested with some, uh, and uh, uh, we wish to test with more. Um, for example, um, integrating with PG routing for calculating shortest distance uh, so that to support, to support network points. Uh, you know you can represent the coordinates either absolute as latitude and longitude or as map match it like a, uh, I, I, an identifier to a certain road in a road network and the fraction uh, of, a, uh, of a distance that is traveled to get more context. Uh, pipeline DB provides some stream processing of our PostgreSQL. We did some, let's say, toy experiment on it. Uh, we do support uh, good integration with Citus. Uh, Citus is for uh, uh, scalability so that you can uh, run a PostgreSQL database uh, on a cluster uh, and your queries get distributed. Uh, so combining both MobilityDB and Citus one can uh, do um, uh, query, query big data sizes. So my colleague uh, there is responsible for this part. Um, for, for a quick start uh, using MobilityDB, there is a Docker image, yeah, and so on. So uh, how does it look like loading the data? The most common format is comma separated. You can always transfer whatever uh, uh, tracking format to some comma separated. Uh, so, uh, most important create extension mobility DB uh, cascade. That's how to start supporting uh, these spatiotemporal operations in your PostgreSQL database. Cascade will also uh, uh, create extension PostGIS if it is not there. Yeah, because uh, Basically, MobilityDB does uh, manage the temporal part and its relation to spatial part. And when, whenever it is about spatial processing, it delegates to PostGIS. Uh, so in this table uh, at the left, that's a pretty standard one that you would use for any, uh, uh, for just loading the, the, the flat information you get from uh, the GPS device. So you have longitude, latitude, and time. These are the key things and also some identifier uh, for the moving object and the trip. And that's the one you can use using, uh, you can do with MobilityDB. He here you, you see one column called the trip, which is a T geometry point. This is the one that's going to carry the complete uh, trip. So every row in this table will represent a trip. And in order to load this table in this table and create your trips, uh, basically you combine a every point with its timestamp, do whatever projection uh, you want in order to put it in the coordinate system required, create an instance of these and then aggregate all instances that are uh, for the same trip and same uh, car, aggregate them in an array and then put this array in a temporal uh, geometry point. So now you have this complete trip uh, uh, in a single data item. Um, to support, uh, well, you can, you can, you can uh, also uh, use other formats, GTFS for public transport uh, schedules. Um, and there is a tutorial about this on the GitHub of MobilityDB that shows step by step how to create trajectories from GTFS. Uh, Google location data, if you, uh, you can download your own track and then start uh, playing with it. Uh, actually, uh, Google stores a lot, so it will be fun. Uh, you can start uh, 
calculating aggregates, how much time you spent in driving or you spent walking, uh, where you go. Uh, if you manage to get location data of someone else, that's becoming more interesting. <laughs> Um, and that's also another workshop, uh, so you get a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, tutorial. Uh, a third workshop that's nice uh, is managing AIS data. This is uh, ship data, basically. Here we use some uh, data published from the Danish Maritime Authority. Uh, they have huge data size, uh, like three terabytes uh, of uh, ship uh, tracking data. Uh, this only shows a single day after some filtering. It has, uh, so the original file is 10 million rows and one gigabyte, not, not very big, but you can go bigger. Um, this is an application done by colleagues uh, uh, in Moscow uh, who use MobilityDB to, uh, to, to uh, play with the public transport. Uh, well, not to play, <laughs> you want to put it. Uh, it was a public transport network in, in Moscow, and they did these nice velocity maps basically by aggregating uh, the spatiotemporal trajectories. Um, yeah, very nice visualization uh, if it works. So, this is normally. Yeah, it will start moving. <laughs> so that's only yesterday. Uh, had very nice meeting with uh, our colleague uh, uh, Yang Suk from uh, from the uh, Artificial Intelligence Research Center in Japan. Uh, actually, visualizing MFJSON. MFJSON is a new to appear OGC standard. Uh, I know from the talk of Jody that uh, not many are fan of OGC. But it is changing. OGC now is doing pretty cool stuff, including standards for uh, moving features. Uh, so this data basically was exported from MobilityDB as MFJSON imported in this Cesium extension uh, and then visualized uh, in the moving. This is one of the ships in the, in the AIS example. Uh, they even did some 3D, so you can see a space-time cube. This is the same shape, but now that's a spatiotemporal uh, movement. So uh, let's look more about uh, queries in MobilityDB and what kind of operations you can get there. Uh, so. In this example, and in the following few ones, uh, I'll, um, uh, the same ship uh, database uh, will be used. Basically, we have a table ships that has an identifier for a trip, that has a trip trajectory as a ge geometry point, temporal geometry point, uh, speed over ground. This is a typical uh, obs um, 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 observation reported by the AIS sensors uh, that tells you the speed uh, of the ship. And because it changes over time, it's loaded into a temporal float. So this is coming from the source information, not calculated. Course over ground, also temporal float. And then I pre-calculate uh, the spatial trajectory, which is a line string, uh, project the same trip uh, into some uh, 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 projected coordinate system, the ETRS, which fits uh, the area of Denmark. Uh, now. If we want to list all the ships that commute between these two ports, Rodabi and Puta Garden, uh, so you have two ports and you want to see which ships uh, commute around. Uh, so I express this in this SQL query. Uh, basically, the two ports are represented as two rectangles, and then we are interested in the trips that intersect uh, the two rectangles together. So that two predicates intersects. So this predicate uh, is a mobility DB one. It accepts a, te a trajectory, a te temporal geometry point, and some uh, geometry, and it returns a boolean. Yeah, and then in order to do this efficiently, you need an R tree. Uh, so you create uh, um, a gist index over the uh, projected trip uh, column. So uh, some gist index will 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 be used be behind the execution of this. Uh, query. And this is the result. 
the two ports are the red rectangles, and then these are all the ships traversing. Um, another query, uh, find the ships that have speed over ground different from the speed calculated from trajectory. Basically, in this table, you have two speed components, one that is coming from the sensor, SOG, and one that you can calculate from the spatiotemporal trajectory that has been constructed. Normally, they should be the same. If they are not the same, then the sensor is providing some uh, uh, wrong information. So I don't know why the query should be interesting. I thought it's interesting, so I, I try it, uh, get everything from the table ships, and then perform a minus between the two speed components. We'll convert both to kilometers per hour. Uh, and then convert a minus, and, and this minus is a temporal minus between two temporal floats, so it's going to be calculating the difference at every time instant, and producing a temporal float, and the time-weighted average uh, will uh, summarize this temporal float into a single float, uh, and compares if the speed difference is greater than 10, then show me this trip. So this is what I just explained. You have two speed components, the one calculated, the blue one, is the one calculated from the spatiotemporal trajectory. The orange one is the one uh, SOG. If you do a temporal minus, this is what you get. And then you summarize this using time-weighted average to get a single uh, float. Uh, I didn't put a result here, but uh, we got some trips that really showed noise. Uh, this is another query for a, uh, an aggregation, so here it aggregates the length of the, uh, of the trips in, uh, per, day, per hour. So basically we want to see what is the distance traveled per ships every hour, so every hour in the day, how many sh uh, what is the total distance traveled by all ships, as an indicator of how busy the Danish water is every hour. So uh, we create a relation of uh, 24 periods, the 24 hours, and for every period we restrict the trajectory to this period, and then just uh, calculate the length in kilometers uh, of, of the uh, trip, and do a regular sum over these, group by the period. So you get something like this. So per hour, this is the total traversed distance by all the ships. Uh, nothing interesting, more or less it is the same all the day, but the query is interesting. Um, this is a temporal aggregate, so in the previous one we did a sum, here that's a temporal sum, uh, and it is using the operator cumulative length, cumulative length uh, uh, at every time instant, it tells how, what is the distance that has been traversed so far from the beginning of the trip. So the result is a temporal float. And now you have multiple temporal floats per trip. Uh, so you do a, a, a temporal sum, which will sum these temporal floats at every time instant. And the result is a temporal float that looks like this. So this is a time, this is a distance. And you see that it is steep increasing which confirms the previous query that there is no difference according to, uh, uh, to the hour or the time. This is another trip to do a join. Here uh, we want to see whether there were some danger situations in the data set where two ships come very, came very close to one another. Uh, and for this uh, predicate distance within, taking two trajectories and checking whether they have ever came to 300 meters close to one another. So uh, this query is uh, joining the, self-joining the ship to itself. And if so, for these uh, trajectories, show me the shortest line between the two trajectories. So the result is something uh, like this. Uh, the blue ships and the green ships, whenever a blue ship comes close to a green ship, 300 meters or less, 
we see this uh, red line. So the ones above are at the entrance of the port. So that's not a big deal. Ships are going slow, they are entering the port. But maybe this one is more interesting because it happens just in the middle. Two ships are coming close to one another. Maybe one would like to further look at their direction, their speed, where they're heading towards one another. So uh, uh, you can continue writing, uh, uh, adding more complexity to the SQL. This is what uh, I mentioned in the beginning. You can run this on a cluster. Just put on every node, Citus, MobilityDB, PostgreSQL, and PostGIS. Uh, the data can, will be sharded and replicated. And then uh, the user query, you have few management commands to shard your data and to create reference tables and so on. And then everything else is transparent. You just write the query, it gets distributed. Uh, and we saw that uh, on four machines, we gain like the queries become 20 times faster. So uh, to, uh, to end, MobilityDB is a moving object database system. It, uh, it's an extension of PostgreSQL and PostGIS. It's developed by uh, uh, the team uh, in ULB. Uh, it's open source, it's available on GitHub, uh, and it's compliant with the OGC standard for moving features, the new development that is happening over there. So, yeah, it doesn't show the last okay. slide. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We have one minute for one question, and even a short one at that. Please. Could you speak up a little? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it builds on top of uh, the post GIS point, which can be three dimensional. But I know that the distance functions in post GIS are not very accurate when they come to third dimension. So the distance is done by post GIS basically. Mobility DB will manage the time. Okay. Thank you very much again. Thank you.